Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe. This is the first episode in the Coding a 2D Game Engine in Java series. So in this episode, what we're going to be doing is coding or setting up our project and getting a window started. So we will set up our LWJGL project in IntelliJ and then we will get a window up and running just so that we have the basis to start working. If you haven't checked out the last tutorial, you should definitely check that out because that goes over everything that we will be covering in these tutorials. So let's get started and start our project and set up the window. All right, guys, so if you haven't already, open up IntelliJ and then hit new project. Now I have the project window open up over here. What you're gonna wanna do is go to the left hand corner and select Gradle. We're going to be using Gradle for our project because this will allow us to import all the libraries for LWJGL into our game. So then you'll just hit next and then uh, group ID is just if you're doing a Maven repository, which we are not. And so that just helps that out. We're just going to worry about the artifact ID, which is basically uh, what our projects be called. I'm just going to say Mario because that's the end goal of this. Next, select where you want this to go. So I'm going to go into C, Dev, and then I'm going to hit a new folder. And I'm just going to call this uh, Mario for YouTube. And I'm going to hit OK and finish. Then it's going to ask you to open up the project in a new window if you have a window already open. And you can just hit this window. Next thing you're going to want to do is go to lwjgl.com. Now, I have will include the link in the description. So you'll get to a link that looks like this. And then we're going to say customize LWJGL. So it'll take you to this and you're going to click on to minimal OpenGL first. So this will get us all the minimal OpenGL libraries. And then you can hit uh, show descriptions, which will show the descriptions of each library. Make sure you check JAML. JAML is the Java math library that we will be using for our game. And then just make sure you have 3.2.3 selected. Then it will have ASIMP selected already. This is for importing 3D models. We won't be using this that library, but it's good to have once we do switch to 3D. JILFW, which is the window handler that we will be using in this tutorial specifically. Make sure you check native file dialog. We will be using this to open up file dialogs for any operating system. OpenAL is the audio library we will be using. OpenGL is the graphics library we'll be using. And STB is so that we can load images, fonts, all that different stuff, uh, sound files and everything. And that should be it. And then you'll notice uh, also too, make sure you have Gradle selected because then you'll get at the bottom of the screen this text. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy all of this and we're gonna open up our IntelliJ project and double click onto the build.gradle. So once you open up the build.gradle, it should look something like this with, with very minimal things inside. Paste that code that we had right up there into the file, and then just take out this repository's Maven Central because we already have that up here. Now, all this is is sort of like a build file for Java. It just allows Java to know, hey, we're gonna be using all these libraries, and then it can import them online for us. And then it also specifies the version of our project, which we're just saying is 1.0 and the compatibility. So we want to change this to 1.11 because we will be using Java 1.11 or above, and you can switch this to whatever you want. 1.11 is the minimum that we will be supporting. And then next you'll just notice that all these different things are just basically importing all the libraries that we had. And it's gonna pop up a little thing over here. Gradle projects need to be imported. Hit import changes. And it should say configure successful, which means it's now imported everything inside of our Gradle. Uh, inside of our project. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to want to go into main Java and we'll create a new class and this will be our main class. So this will be the entrance to our program and we're just going to create a main function. So just the standard main function. And then what we're going to do inside here is basically we're going to create a window which we do not have right now uh, by calling it. So this window is going to be a singleton which if you've watched some of my previous tutorials, the G geometry dash in Java and snake tutorials, uh, we went over that in a little bit more depth, but basically means we get it via the class definition. And then we're just going to say window.run. And so these are all functions we're going to be creating right now. Next, we're going to go in here and we're going to create a new package. So I'm going to call this Jade because that's the name of the engine that I've given it. Then we're going to go into Jade and we're going to add in a new class and we're going to call this window. So this is the window class that we're going to be making. 
Now we need window.get and we need window.run. So let's go back into here real quick. First, let's create a private constructor. Reason we're making this private is because we don't want any outside things to create a window. We only ever want one window class and this will ensure that it is a singleton and only the window class can create it. We're gonna need a few variables for our window. We're going to need the width and the height and we are going to need the title. So we'll have all those up there and then we'll just initialize those inside here. We'll say this dot width equals 1920 or whatever you want. This dot height equals 1080. So I'm just giving it a standard HD definition. And then we'll say this dot title equals Mario. And then we're gonna go up here to make these private because we will be trying to do private variables and everything for this tutorial because it is helpful so that we can control what happens every time these are changed. Now we'll create that get function. So the get function will be a public static uh, window is what it's gonna return and we'll just call that get. Then what we can say is up here we will create a private static window object and this will be our singleton. So we'll ever only have one instance of the window and we'll initialize this to null up here and we'll basically just say inside here if window.window .window is null then window.window .window equals a new window and then we'll just return window.window. .window. And so all this means is the only time the window is ever going to be created is the first time we call window.get right here. And from then on, it will be calling just this single window object so that we don't have a bunch of different window objects uh, because inside of our game engine, we are only ever going to have one window. That's the reason we're doing it this way. So the singleton, there you can read up more on that and stuff too to get a little bit more in-depth information about it. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to create the run function. So this function is going to do a few different things. So we'll say public void run. And we're going to do a lot of the stuff that is inside. If you go to the LWJGL website and you hit get started, it gives you this nice uh, hello world class, which basically uh, puts up a window. So a lot of the stuff that we're going to be doing in here is literally just copied and pasted from here to set up the window because that type of stuff you only ever really do once. Now inside here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say system dot line hello lwjgl plus version dot get version. This is just helpful so that you know that lwjgl is working. Uh, this is also taken directly from that tutorial. And then we're gonna call a couple different functions. We're gonna say init and loop, which we have not created yet. So let's create init first, and then we'll fill in loop after we create the init function. So we'll say public void loop down here. So for our initialization function, we have to do quite a bit to get our window up and running. With the previous series, we really just had to do a couple things and then the window was up, but here we have to do a lot of things manually. So first thing we're gonna do is set up an error callback. And the error callback is basically just where the GLFW will print to if there's any errors. And we want it to print to down here in our build log which is where we'll be looking for most of our uh, info and logging information. Everything. So we'll say jillfw error callback dot create print, and then we're gonna say system dot error dot set. And so what this is gonna do is it's just gonna create the uh, printing method for where the errors will be printed to, and we just say system dot error. So it would be the same as you saying system dot error, uh, we have an error or something like that, system.error.println, something like this. And that's basically all that this will do is it's just gonna direct all the errors to do something like that. Next, we're gonna initialize jillfw so that it can set up our windows. So we'll say if not jillfw init and hit alt enter to import that. Say throw new illegal state exception, unable to initialize jillfw. And once again, this is all taken directly from that little intro tutorial. We're basically just saying this function will return true if it succeeds in initialization and false if it does not. And we'll just throw an error if it does not succeed. Next, we want to configure JillFW. So we're gonna say JillFW default window hints, which gives it all the default window hints. Window hints are basically just like, do you want it to be resizable? Do you want to uh, have a default close operation? Do you want it to be visible? Things like that. And so we're gonna set a few of these window hints now. Say so jillfw window hint, 
And then we're going to say glfw visible is glfw false. And the reason we're doing this is because we are going to have it as not visible until we are done creating the window. And then once we're done creating the window, we will make it visible. And then just import static. Make sure you import the static method right here. If you hit enter, it'll bring up this little uh, window. And then we can import all of those. Then we can say glfw window hint. And we'll say glfw resizable is glfw true, which it should be by default, but we're just putting it there. And then last one, glfw window hint, glfw maximized is glfw true. So this will make sure that when the window starts, it is in the maximized position, which is nice because a lot of times that's what you want. Next, we're going to actually create the window. So we're finally getting around to creating the window. And the reason we set these hints before we create the window is because glfw will now use these hints to create the window. That's why we want it to be false as visible because we want to wait till it's finished creating it. So say glfw window, which is a variable we're going to create, equals glfw create window. And we're going to say this dot width, this dot height, this dot title, and then we're going to say null, null, all caps. And then you can import this. Just make sure you import it from memory util, so memory util dot null. And now what does glfw create? It returns a long. So it creates a long, which is just a number. So say private long glfw window. And we're just going to set that to nothing at first. And so basically, what is this number? This number is a memory address where this window is in the memory space. So glfw is returning us this long, which is a number where the window is in our memory space so that we can handle it because that's the way you do things in C. And we're kind of doing that with our uh, code right now. And then we just pass it in the width, the height, the title. And you'll notice the last two parameters are the monitor and whether we want to share it, which we're just saying to null to let it know, hey, we don't care about the monitor or sharing. And then that will just create it on the primary monitor and not worry about sharing. Then we'll say if glfw window equals null, that means that it did not create the window. We'll say throw new illegal state exception failed to create the glfw window. So that's also directly from their tutorial. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to make OpenGL the context. So we're going to make the context, the OpenGL context current. I'm sorry. So we'll make the OpenGL context current. And this is as simple as doing make context current glfw window. Then we'll enable vsync. And this is basically just buffer swapping. So we'll say glfw swap interval is one. And so vsync just means there's no restriction. Uh, this is basically saying just swap it every single frame. There's no there's no wait time between the frames between how uh, how long we wait. And so this way, we'll go according to the refresh rate of the monitor. We're not according to the monitor, but we'll go as fast as we can, which just means we're enabling vsync. So that's all that means. Next, the window is now created. So we'll make the window visible. So we'll say glfw show window, glfw window, which is our pointer, our long number to our window, which we created up here. So this is finally, <laughs> we have our window created. And then the last thing we have to do is we have to say create capabilities, gl.create capabilities. And I'm going to copy this long comment in. This was also on their website. So it says this line is critical for LWJGL's interoperation with GLFW's OpenGL context or any context. Um, so this basically just makes sure that we can use the bindings. This is really important. You cannot forget this. It will break if you do not have that in there. So this is the initialization. We have the window initialized. Now we have to loop through and actually start our loop. So we'll say while not glfw window should close. And then we're going to pass it the glfw window. So the pointer to our window, that number, we'll say first we're going to pull events, which is just getting key events, mouse events, all that stuff. We'll say glfw pull events. Uh, that will pull it and get the events into our key listeners, which we'll set up in the next tutorial. We'll say GL clear color, and I'm going to set it to red just so that we know for sure that this is working. So this is RGBA one, is from zero to one. So we just say uh, full red and then full alpha, which gives us a red color. And then hit import static method, alt enter to get that pulled up. Make sure you choose GL 11 without the C, and that should be good. Then we'll say GL clear, GL color buffer bit. This tells GL 
OpenGL, the graphics library, how to clear the buffer. And so this is basically saying use the color buffer bit, which takes in what we just put in here. We set the clear color here, and then we just say, okay, now flush that clear color to our entire screen. And that's what that does. And then lastly, we have to say GLFW swap buffers, GLFW window. And so this will swap our buffers automatically. We don't have to worry about that. OpenGL handles all that. OpenGL and GLFW handles all that internally and just swaps the buffers for us. So this should be everything. And now if you hit uh, first run and then run and hit edit configurations, nope, hit build. And so we should get a successful build. And then if we go into main, this should be working perfectly. Then we'll hit run and hit main. And you should get a red screen. So the window is maximized. And if you minimize it, it'll go to 1920 by 1080. And you can resize it, which is what we said. And the title is Mario. So this is a lot of work, as you can see, just to set up a simple window. If you follow my last tutorials, it's really easy to set up a window. And here, there's quite a bit you have to do. And the reason for that is because we're just going at a much lower level, which will give us a much better uh, advantage in terms of speed and everything. So that's the whole reason it's harder, because we're getting closer to the hardware. But we'll also learn a lot more. So just a quick review, what we did was we initialized the window through all these different functions. We have to initialize GLFW, which handles creating the window. We set the window hints, then we actually create the window. We check and see if it succeeded. Next, we make the window current. So we check and we make the content, the window with our current context. We enable vSync. We make the window visible. And then we call this gl.create capabilities, which gives us our bindings to OpenGL, the C bindings. And then lastly, after the initialization is finished, we enter our loop, which basically says while the window should not close, we should pull the events, clear the screen, and then swap buffers. And then if we change this clear color to white, which is what I'm probably going to have it at for most of the time, we'll get a white screen. So this is creating the window. The next tutorial, what we're going to be doing is creating our key listeners and our mouse listeners and all those different things. So we'll be setting up uh, the bindings, which will happen sort of in this initialization function. And we'll be setting up a rough, uh, basically just getting key events and stuff. And then we'll make sure it works by calling it inside of this loop. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please hit like and subscribe. And stay tuned for the next tutorial when we go over how to actually get the key listener set up. Thanks, guys. See ya.